All right, everybody. Well, welcome back to another episode of the Blazer Victory Podcast. John Duncan here. And of course, I'm joined as always with my co-hosts, Darian Smith and Jimmy Marion. And guys, um, unfortunately, UAB uh, did not get it done tonight, losing an embarrassing loss to ULM 32-6. to uh, The week two woes continue. But before we get into recapping that game, this game recap episode of the Blazer Victory Podcast is brought to you by Cahaba Brewing Company. Uh, we're going to spotlight the Oka Uba IPA uh, tonight. Uh, hopefully our listeners <laughs> had a couple after the game. Um, but thank you. Uh, shout out to Cahaba. Um, next Saturday will be our first watch party uh, as UAB plays Arkansas next Saturday at 315. So we certainly hope that everybody can um, join us in the tap room, even considering this loss tonight to ULM. Um, especially our Blazer Victory podcast loyal listeners, you know, c- come have a good time. We're going to have a Blazer Victory Pale L's for $6 a pint. Uh, they're doing that special at Cahaba for us. And uh, they're not going to um, advertise this, but they're also going to do Cahaba Blonde Pitcher special. So next Saturday, um, you can go in and ask for a, bl- a Blonde Pitcher special, and they will help you out. And also, we'll be uh, – having these cool koozies yeah cool koozies honestly that was my mo- uh honestly that was exactly how i felt uh watching this game tonight uh but guys i mean this this sucks i mean it, it does we're just gonna get into it like we talked all hyped up all, hyped up this game all year and just to get an abysmal performance um uab didn't score a touchdown once um just got beat down. Offensive line just looked terrible. Um, and honestly, you know, a lot of guys, uh, a lot of you guys might just tune out and not even listen to this episode, but this was just such an important game. And we know Bryant Vincent wanted this game. We talked about this on the game preview that Bryant Vincent wanted this game. And hats off to BV. BV, I know you're listening. Hats off to you, Blankenship, the staff. Mad respect. You kicked that. You, 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 <laughs> you, you that was a beat down. 32 to 6. But where do we go from here? Where does UAB go from here? I don't what did know, Darren... man. <laughs> like, we don't, like, I don't know, bro. I don't know. Mm. Go to Arkansas, Just, I guess. I mean, but, it, it, hey, Cam, Coach Cam. Cam is a friend of mine, played offensive line here at UAB. Cam, you ain't gotta like my tweets, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all smash this, okay? Like, you, you just write me, man. <laughs> just write me. You know, uh oh. It sucks, man. It, it it does suck. Like, I mean, there's no. That, it like hurts. It like it, physically hurts. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's. Yeah. It's one of the ones, like, it take your passion away. You know how hard it is for us to do this episode? Bro. <laughs> like, yeah. because we talked about the importance of this game. We said how this game, how many times did we say it? You can go back and say this game is going to be a barometer of the season. We were from we went from 13 to 11. We were double digit favorites on the road. Yeah. We talked about our road woes. We talked about the week two. We we went over everything that you can go over about this game. We talked about the BD and the and the staff. We the co- the coffee with coach. He talked about how hey we know what y'all gonna do too. You know coach coach Dilford talked about all of that. Like we heard about all of that. Listen, I respect and I love those guys on the staff, but we got to speak real, too. Like, I, we're not here to be, uh, like, state-run media, you know, try to put a twist on things. We have to tell it how it is. This was one of the worst loss, like, worst losses I've in this program that I've been around because it's, like, embarrassing. I am embarrassed. I know they are embarrassed. I am embarrassed. I would say if it's not the worst loss, it's easily the most embarrassing loss. I can't I cannot think of any other loss that's more embarrassed. It's not even that we lost. It's the way we lost. It's like we got dominated, bro. Like we almost got beat by 30 points. <laughs> that is it. like come on, bro. Like this is and this is what excuse this is BV's first year. First year. 70 new players. 70 new players on that ULM stat, or, uh, roster. 
So what what are we what excuse is what I'm saying? Like there's no sometimes you gotta be real. If I was talking to anybody on that staff, I would be telling them I would be telling them this to their face. Like, so there's no kind of I don't care what people like say, like, oh man, you know, you shouldn't be saying no, no, no. You gotta you gotta be real with people, man. Can you come out? <laughs> I know you posed this question, John. You was like, would you take a loss to ULM if, if we could beat Arkansas? But bro, if we could beat Arkansas, I don't know, I might shed a tear. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At this point, I might shed a tear. But this loss right here. When it what it does to morale. Now, now as those players, you truly only got each other in there. I've been there before in this program. I've been there before where you've had embarrassing um, an embarrassing loss. It's gonna alienate alienate your fan base. I mean, you can't be mad at the fans. They look what we just showed. You think we finna this team struggled with Jackson State? They smashed us. They don't want to come and see that for what. You know, so you're going to have to prove something. It's all on the players. It's on, it's on the coaches, on the staff now. The fan, like, the next home game, whenever, I can't even think of when that is, bro. I'm just, I'm just, my mind is just going. The next home game, man, I, 12K, maybe? Because look what we just showed, man. You can't tell people to, you can't tell people to support this, 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 but but that's what you put out on the field. It's embarrassing, very embarrassing, bro. And um, hey, it's it's my program though. It's y'all's program. We love this program. We've been through dark days. We've been through, you know, lighter days. We just gotta keep pushing. That's just how it is, man. When you when you're a real fan, when you really love a program. You just keep pushing, man. That's all. You just keep going. There's no other way to go. That's my message. There's no other way to go. You take it on the chin. This is embarrassing. You get ready for next week. However that may look, that's whatever it is. But we're going to be here this year. We're going to be here next year. We're going to be. I don't know who's going to be here with us. I don't I don't blame y'all because this is torture right now. This is torture. I don't know who's going to be there with us, but we're going to be here and we're going to continue to show up. Thank y'all for showing up with us. This is. I'm just really talking, just getting stuff off my chest because I need to because I'm hurt. <laughs> I'm hurt. But hey, let's keep showing up. And hey, we here, baby. We here. All right, Jay, what's your thoughts? Well, I sent a stat to our group chat last night about double-digit road favorites, and I was looking back, dating back to the 2006-2007 season, and from what I could tell, UAB football had been favored by double digits on the road a total of eight times, uh, all of which happened post the return, all of which were against Conference USA opponents. So by my research, this game against ULM was the first time at least since 2006, 2007, that UAB football was favored by double digits in a non-conference road matchup, and UAB did not fare well uh, in that opportunity. In my opinion, I'll just be frank, this is what rock bottom is. I feel like UAB football has hit rock bottom. Uh, we've been in rock bottom before, but then we – y'all know the story by now that y'all are listening to this. Like, you know, we – we elevated from there. We won conference championships. We had a program that we were proud of. We had momentum. We had new facilities. We had all this stuff in front of us, new conference affiliation. And then where we are today as it sits, it's just a, a real sad day, a real disappointing performance. Uh, this week, I can't help but look back and I can't help but think about some of the things that were said that were proposed as challenges for this game in particular one of which was uh, we heard over and over again the 18 total players and staff that were formerly at UAB that were at ULM. I was just sitting back before this podcast as we were waiting to hop on. I was looking at something, and the way it was talked about, you would think that uh, Taylor Dupuis and Ernest Hill and this ULM coaching staff just got to ULM yesterday. That coaching staff was hired in January. They've been gone. There's been a spring practice. There's been – uh, summer, there's been fall. There was comments about the ULM staff preparing all the month of June 
for the UAB game. Who is UAB preparing for in June? That's my question. Were we performing? Were we, were we preparing for Alcorn State? Were we preparing for Arkansas? Were we just looking ahead to midseason? Man, some of those comments, helmet. I don't know if the helmet communication was working this week. Uh, maybe that was the reason that the uh, defense kept just flowing through the offensive line and sacking Jacob Zeno five times and putting him under constant pressure. Maybe the helmet communication that was supposed to be going to Jacob Zeno was in Billy Pullen. What's his name? Billy Pullen's helmet? <laughs> Pullen? Uh, I don't know, guys, but I mean, hopefully you can sense the frustration because it definitely exists. This is absolutely just a abysmal performance and embarrassing is the right word like there's no and ulm i might as well shut up because they're just like eating it alive right now for any ulm fans coaches whatever they're just like yes yes keep keep saying it keep talking about how awful it was it was just a truly awful performance and um i really hope that uh for uab sake that this is a just anomaly and that uab is able to bounce back as quickly and as effectively as possible for all of our hope yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to spend that positive. I mean, I, you've got at Arkansas this week. I mean, maybe after the bye week before that uh, September 28th game against Navy. I mean, but I was, you know, in the group chat or in the Patreon community chat and in our group chat, I was telling y'all like early on that this ULM game was very familiar. It looked very familiar and it kept taking me back to the Navy game last year, just the ineptitude on offense. What are, what, what are they doing? Um, defense did a solid job, but I mean, if the offense can't move the ball and score, I mean, you wear and tear and like this ULM, like it was just such, it was BV to a T like we expected this, you know, ball control, milk the clock, pass if you have to every now and then, but I I just don't know what we were thinking on offense. And, and, and like you look at the Alcorn game and so the missed opportunities, but I mean, I still thought the offense did well last week, but I mean, that offensive line, like you, you would think ULM had the best defensive line in the country. And that's not by far, not the case, not the case. So this is very scary for UAB going the rest of the season and then going to the SEC team next week. I mean, I wish I had the answer, guys. I wish, like, where, you know, I know our listeners are saying, well, where do we go from here? I don't know, but we'll be with you uh, previewing Arkansas. And, 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 <laughs> is that Andy Kennedy's music? <laughs> Hey, I did hear. Hey, I did hear the non-con schedule is supposed to drop this upcoming week. So that's some good news. Um, <laughs> hopefully, yes, yes. preseason All-American baby, let's go! Like, you know, put out that bat, the the bat signal. We need y'all. You know, like we need y'all to have a deep tournament run. If if this is the sacrifice, you know, that we're gonna that we gotta pay. Like, okay, let it be for a reason because this hurts like i don't want to i want to see both of my i love i'm a former player here I've, I've got married here like i've met you guys i've had kids all of this because of this program so this program means a lot to me you know so just to see like we circled and double circled and triple circled this game that we talk about we did the poll on what game would be the most important and Overwhelming. Well, I know people said Memphis, but our thoughts most of the time when people come in, it was overwhelmingly this game. Like this game here. This is gonna. We're gonna say we're gonna know how the season is gonna go. This is gonna be the barometer. We're gonna beat them forty-one thirteen. Whatever. We was having all these scores, right? Like we 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 just knew because we felt that they felt the same urgency. And I'm not saying they did or they didn't. But what we saw was we we clearly saw one team more urgent. I don't care what you say. One other team just looked as if they wanted it more. Man, when, you know what really pissed me off on one of those fumbles um, when, when Zeno got, I think it was still 6 or 13, and Zeno got sacked for, and fumbled by pulling. I talked about that same twist 
the same freaking twist on the same side, on the right side, the same twist. They did the same thing that Alcorn did. Like, seeing stuff like that just drives, it, like, really drives me nuts. Really does. Like, how do you get beat? This, this is what really, they ran the same game, and it really just killed you in the second half against Alcorn. Then here y'all go, and you and them just like, okay, let's just do the same thing. Oh, it works. Hmm. And just to see our guys kind of just looking to the side, just kind of, oh, we missed. My uh, my wife just texted me said, can you bring it down to Ted? I'm sorry, Shaniqua. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. Just, I hey, don't know, man. Booty, Booty had 87 yards passing, and they scored how many points? 32 on us? How about how about Taven Curry, the former UAB running back, leading ULM with 13 carries for 64 yards? Fontroy you know was in. Personal. Yeah, Fontroy was involved. Uh, he was he almost had that pick I think late. Um, he also was delivering some big hits. I mean, you could just sense it. And there was something. It was almost kind of like uh, I'd listened to some ULM pressers and things like that. And BV was pretty adamant in the interviews I heard that this was just another game. Like he was like, this is just another game. And like, we know it wasn't just another game, but I mean, he was playing it pretty chill. Did you know, did you see him on the sideline at one point? He was so hyped. Like I can't blame him, man. We talked about, I mean, uh, you might want to take the mic away from me. This, this ULM team where they were ranked, you know, coming in the season was dead last. In all of college, in all of Division One FBS football, was dead last. And we've talked about and we've heard at ULM and their facilities and their struggles, uh, ten straight losses, and <laughs> coming in. And yeah, they didn't look great against Jackson State, um, but man, they whooped our booty all <laughs> night long. <laughs> And it, I, I just felt like I felt like when it was like thirteen to six, or whatever, and they were just chunk like just you know going up and down the field, just taking their time. I was like, how many more possessions are we actually going to have? Like, I mean, just bleeding the clock, chunk after chunk. Um, man, what happened? What has happened to our downfield passing game? Like, that's a great question. Well, yeah. I don't. I, 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 I mean, I'm really confused. Is it receivers? Is it losing Tejan and? TJ, I mean the it, line, like the offensive line, has to hold up for downfield passing, and I mean we saw tonight that they couldn't hold up. Well, what happened to them? What happened to the offensive line? It was interesting though. Like early, I mean we were moving the ball, um, and we were getting good run play. I mean BB was looking good early. I mean I think he had like forty or even fifty yards. I think he only finished with like sixty four. But I mean some of those were certainly like in the first, most of those were certainly in the first half, and so. I mean, we were moving the ball effectively. We weren't finishing, and then the turnovers happened, and then all of a sudden, then everything. I mean, we got sacked five times. I would envision most of those were in the second half. I mean, it just kind of seems like everything kind of fell apart late. But, John, <laughs> you texted uh, you texted at halftime, and you're like, we got to see some second-half adjustments. Well, UAB was outscored 19-0 to in the second half. <laughs> My last podcast, our last podcast last year, I gave a statistic on what UAB had done in the second halves over the course of the season. It was really bleak. And throughout the first two games of the season, like it's continuing like those trends, like some of those things that were 14 games in now. We played 14 games and we've won four games, one of which was against. No, we've won five games. Who even knows? There's not a lot. <laughs> I mean, it's just like we have a pretty relatively large sample size now of like when are the second half adjustments going to improve? Now, the biggest shocking for me is that offense. Like, I can't believe it. Like, I, I want to take partial responsibility because I you can probably quote me on the Patreon. I was like, I have zero concerns with this UAB offense. <laughs> well, but that's, it's so confusing because it, I felt like you with another year in the offense, you couldn't do anything but get better, right? Like. Yeah. Our offense was like much better last year. Much better. Even at this part of the year, it was much better than what we've shown. Take that second half, that all corn. I mean, I didn't 
I felt like it was a lot of fixable things, but I kept on saying, can we be sound was my main thing was, can we be sound? Guys, like we don't look, it's like we don't look prepared, which is weird. It's like we, we don't look sound. It's so many missed assignments is my thing. And I admittedly, I didn't watch a lot of the second half. Like, let me go ahead and get that out the way. Like, after that Isaiah Jacobs one ball, I was like, you know what? Nah. <laughs> I'm not finna subject myself to this. You know what I'm saying? Why? But I, I just, I just, I, I was at a wedding. You know, I got on the dance floor. I was swag surfing. Like, I was like, well, I started drinking. I started drinking Chardonnay. I'm like, no, bro. I'm not finna do this. But I don't understand. Um, so I'm just looking. I'm just saying, like, what's going on with our downfield passing? Like, when we were first, when we were, it looked like we were playing like BB would, honestly. It was just a lot of run game, heavy, heavy, like, 11 personnel formation, you know, two two backs in the back, like, all these tight ends. I'm like, this ain't what I envisioned. When, when we were throwing the ball, it was, like, tight end, five-yard flat routes, you know, like, I'm like, oh boy, like, and when I kept seeing that over and over, last year we weren't like that at all. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember it used to be creativity, guys crossing 15 yards down, Tasia and Palmer taking it. It was like we had some stuff, but now we seem predictable. The same, some of the same old stuff that we used to complain about, we seem. Like we're searching for our identity and we just can't find one. We don't know who we are, what we want to do. And then when that second half come around, Jimmy said it's been 14 games. I feel like in every single game, second half has been worse than the first half. Mm -hmm. Even the games we won, go back to FAU, how we was go, go back to USF when we won that game, how we were just hanging on to dear life trying to in the second half. It's like, Go back, watch Memphis. We were tied up. And then it was bam, you get blew out, you get blew out in the second half. UTSA. I can you can go back to all of these games. Georgia Southern, you know, we didn't end that half well. And then we go, so you go back to this game, and it's kind of like it's the same thing. And I don't know what that is. I really don't. And I've never been a coach. I've never been a football coach, so I can't tell you. I just been a player, and as a player. I don't know what that is. I feel like you shouldn't have more information on the team and you go in and you feel more confident. I don't I don't know. That's but that's a real thing for us. And guys, I was listening to some Florida State podcasts because <laughs> I was just like just wanted to see how down they are. And they was like, man, they don't have any answers. They can't really tell you. Shout out to our defense. They they really tried. After a while, shit, you – I mean, who I cuss. After a while, you get tired. After a while, you get tired. You're you're holding up. You're holding up. You're not getting any support. Special teams is garbage. You're not getting any support. I don't blame defense at all. I don't. Offense, horrible. And I don't know. I don't know. I can't sit here. People say, what y'all think need to be – we don't throw the ball downfield. Offensive line getting Zeno look shaky. Everything I, I don't I can't tell you what we got at wide receiver. Everything looks bad. So I don't know what to tell. I just hope that they play better. That's all I can tell you. Please try to come to the watch party. <laughs> we can drink some uh, Blaze of Victory Pale Ale. And, and maybe we can just drink together in fellowship, you know, and then and, and maybe through the power of fellowship, our players will play better. How about that? Man, uh, you know, I got all the stats here. Fourth quarters last year, we were outscored in fourth quarters, eight out of the 12 games. Um, one of the games in which we outscored the opponent was against NCAT, a four point advantage. And then against Louisiana, we were playing like we're a hustling in the fourth quarter. I don't know if you remember that game, but it, it was on one of those sports center segments where it was like, I think we ruined, like it was like bad beats because we just came back and we we're going for it on fourth down. And uh, we, we outscored Louisiana in that game. And then we uh, outscored temple. We, we definitely dominated temple at, at protective stadium. We outscored them by 10. <laughs> so 
Yeah, the the second the second half trends um, have to get better. Um, yeah, but about the downfield passing game, obviously T.J. Jones, I think, was like the big miss from that perspective. I think he was going to be the downfield threat that we need. And we saw him going back to last year against NCAT. I remember him. He had that long score, that long touchdown in the first game of the year, and he was uh, probably going to be that guy for us. And we still haven't seen Yusuf Terry, right? So he's, uh, I guess, still sidelined with an injury. He was going to come in, hopefully, and be more of a downfield threat. I think he had a big score against UTSA last year, a long one. Um, but but and, we talking about injury, John. I wonder how much we really missing Caleb Perez. Yeah. Like yeah, he was supposed to come in, maybe be a, a difference maker. Ricky Lee was still out. Ray Thornton were still out tonight. I think Ricky Lee was dressed, but I didn't see him go out there at all. I think he. I think Lee might have got in, gotten in early on. I think. I thought I heard the announcement. He, was definitely, he definitely made the trip. But hey, a couple of shout outs though. For real, is Kelvin Hill uh, Jr. is legit. Like he was. He was getting after. He looked like, good. He was really, really good. And uh, how about Sarad Bryant? I mean, Sarad Bryant was out there, and till the very end, like you could tell, just he 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 got off the bus and he played a hell of a game. Uh, and there were other guys too. I mean, again, I still thought that BB was running really well and running really effectively, like early in the first half. Um, and then I know I'm forgetting some obvious guys right now. Let's see, Ever Rousseau had ten tackles. Yeah, I think it was. What about that crazy? Did you see Darren? I don't know if this is in the second half or not. It must have been early in the second half where I think UAB has put uh, ULM in like a third and 14 situation. I think it was Michael Moore that got his hands on the ball and that went up in the air. And I think it was number three for ULM who caught that pass. And I was just like, gosh, dang it. Like, just how unlucky was that? Oh, my gosh. There was just so many just blunders. I don't know, but there were some bright spots. Like there, there were some bright spots. Uh, and defensively, I kept telling Big Jim, who I was watching the game with, like I was like, I'm not even, not even mad at the defense. Like for the most part, that one touchdown they gave up for the longest time was uh, after the strip sack fumble, and then seven of the points was off the pick six. You know, so I mean, ultimately, like the defense played a game, and they played well enough for UAB to win. In my opinion, special teams, I feel like they took a step back. Um, how how goal. has the, the offense and the defense from they've swapped, you know, from last year? I thought we weren't we we were supposed to just get better, not yeah. just swap, you know, like, yeah, I feel pretty comfortable with our defense. You know, like it was a pick six and it was a freaking safety. Oh, yeah. A safety that. Uh, that safety made me sick to my. If we're talking about low points, we're talking about low points. It was six to thirteen. That safety happened, and when I saw it, I was just like, "What?" You just just kind of fail, you know. It's just like couldn't at least like extend out to the one. <laughs> like it was just at that point, I was just already kind of getting ready to swag surf. I'm like, "Oh, I'm finna, I'm finna get ready to swag surf." Like this is. I got, I got, I gotta detach myself. So for you fans, Jimmy, John, for us, we love this program. We do. So in order to mentally, and I'm, I'm really talking from the heart here. In order to mentally just keep yourself in a good spot, because sports can really play with your emotions. It can play with your. You can wake up mad as hell. And you still got a wife, you still got kids, or you got a husband or whatever. They're gonna be like, dang, and they can really affect your day, like seriously. Like, take some time, breathe, appreciate the good things in your life, appreciate the good things that UAB football and UAB athletics and just UAB in general has brought to you. You know what I'm saying? And just come, these are just dudes throwing the ball around on the field. That's what it is. It's entertainment. Remember that. It just, it's all entertainment. So don't get so caught up. We trash right now. Maybe we won't be trash next week. Be Arkansas. Go to the go to the CFP play. <laughs> we go to the playoffs. <laughs> but do we still have that CFP like logo at the pavilion? I was curious. <laughs> hey. 
who knows, man? Who's who knows what the football guys got in store for us, man? Maybe we got that upset. Maybe you know. Maybe it's coming next week. Just detach, guys. Detach. Go to church. Hey. Do what you got to do, yeah. and just yes, clear your minds. We'll 100%. be here, though. We'll be here. Yeah, we hey, we might need to talk about just doing one episode a week instead of doing like a game preview and a game recap. But yeah, well, what y'all think? Hey, hey, YouTube. Oh, hey, I didn't even shout out to YouTube. Hey, uh, so subscribe to us uh, on YouTube at Blazer Pod. Let us know. Do y'all still want an Arkansas game preview and game recap? Or are y'all cool with just switching to one a week? Start. We got to start getting those basketball scoops, baby. <laughs> Yeah, let's go, baby. Let's go. All right. Well, hey, we're we're, we're gonna wrap this. Um, it's over thirty minutes. Um, nothing but nothing else. Uh, <laughs> I heard the announcers in the, uh talk about that. Um, That's how you're supposed to wear your shirts. There you go. There you go. Give me a deep cut hoodie. <laughs> well, hey guys, Cahaba Brewing Company next Saturday, three fifteen. Get there early. And like I said, six dollar Blazer Victory Pale Ales, guys. How cool is it that Cahaba is naming a beer after our podcast, Blazer Victory Pale L? Let's go! Hey, don't know what's going to happen in the game, but like Darian said earlier, let's just get down there. Hey, if it's twenty of y'all, I hope it's a hundred of y'all. But after tonight, maybe not. But just come fellowship with us, have a good time. Bring your dog. <laughs> you say bring your dog. <laughs> bring your dog. Yeah, you can bring your dog. If it, yeah, you can bring your dog at Kava. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, our UAB uh, athletics love it, love dogs. So that's right. You know. <laughs> I should have had my dog in the podcast and my lap was old. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, oh man. Well, all right. Well, Darren. Hey, Darren. Go ahead and send us up. <laughs> Blazer Nation. <laughs> Don't let the flame burn out. Just keep blazing. Keep blazing. Uh.